Next, Experian, Equifax, Call Credit, three companies with immense power over all our lives. They're the agencies that rate everyone's creditworthiness by keeping track of our bills, debts and repayments. A good credit score makes it easier, obviously, to get a mortgage, a personal loan or a new credit card. A bad rating and you might even be rejected for a mobile phone contract. A wrong score, more common than you think. Louise Holland, who's had her own problems with credit agencies, reports. They're big, they're powerful and they're apparently all-knowing. Defaulted on a debt, missed a loan repayment or simply forgotten to pay a utility bill. That information will go on their databases and your credit score will be affected. My credit report was something I'd never even thought about, let alone worried about. But three years ago, I applied for a mortgage and got rejected. I was stunned. Why? Because an agency I'd never heard of could have such influence over my financial life. The insecure nature of freelance pay meant my credit rating was affected and, as I changed addresses often, I was also considered a credit risk, even though I'd never missed a rental payment. This information was sold to my bank. The result? I was prevented from buying a home. With so much power in their hands, it's vital these agencies don't make mistakes. But they do. Assad Mushtaq believed his credit record was squeaky clean until he started receiving job rejections. I noticed that something wasn't quite correct. Every time I applied for a position, I'd be refused to have bad credit. As he'd worked in finance himself, Assad knew that personal information can be collected by more than one agency. He assumed they'd all produce identical reports, but he was wrong. You see, each agency has a unique way of rating you, meaning you can have three separate scores. There were no problems with his Equifax or Call Credit reports, but Experian's credit report was very different. I was shocked to find on my Experian report that I had a CCJ, which is a county court judgement, which was settled and should not have been on there. Also, a HSBC default student camp. Noticing these two items made me very upset because they shouldn't have been in the first place. This wrong information had been left on Assad's report for at least two years. Now it's been corrected, his credit rating has gone from fair to excellent. But why didn't they act earlier? The impact has been very stressful for myself. I lost my father two years ago, so my mother relies upon me financially. i will not be able to forward in my career. I'm still working in the same position I was two years ago. They're playing with people's lives, and if it's wrong information, people can really, really really badly get penalised and be affected in many great ways. Like Assad, I fought a long battle to get my credit report changed. I used to think I was in a tiny minority, but not anymore. We had recently surveyed our members. One in eight said that they'd found errors on their credit file at some stage in the past. Uh, and of course, that's a really difficult situation to extract yourself from, but really important to ensure that you get that sorted so that lenders are making the right decisions. Like me, most people don't realise there's a problem with their credit report until they receive a rejection. This is Brian Childs, who applied for a new credit card last year. I was expecting when I applied for uh, the credit card that um, I'd be assuring for it, um, that I'd be accepted straight away. But he wasn't. When the rejection came, Brian checked his credit report with one agency and all seemed fine. But then he looked up the file that Equifax had on him. I found to my horror that it was completely blank. They had no credit history for me at all. You know, I've had credit cards, I've had loans. I've had a mortgage since 1995. I've had a good credit history ever since and they had no record of any of it. And I just thought that was, you know, it was shocking. With no credit history and therefore no proof of him being able to make payments, Brian was turned down for the credit card. Equifax say they will update his report, but only if Brian collects and sends them details of his loans and payments, stretching back 16 years. As far as I'm aware, it's their job to, to keep track of this information and they weren't doing it properly. Equifax make their money from selling that information and I was having to go and find it all myself to provide them with their means to make money. There are only three credit reference agencies in the UK. It's a real privilege for those companies to have the chance to have one of those three licences. And with that privilege comes responsibility. They need to be ensuring that the data on everybody's file is correct. It's not just up to them to rely on the lenders and the utility companies to make sure it's right. 
Some credit reference agencies now do more than simply collect and sell personal data. They hold so much information about us, our spending habits and movements, that they also provide a tracing service for third parties. So that means if you go missing without repaying a debt, they'll help the people you owe track you down. But here too, they can make mistakes and cause chaos as a result. Meet Denise and Paul Smith from Norfolk. Debt collectors are chasing them for more than £7,000, all because of information provided by Equifax. In January this year, we received um, seven letters from a debt collection agency and they made demands for return of unpaid council tax, um, housing benefit and various other things and bold red letters saying that they were going to send a van round and do not ignore this letter. Not just frightening, but shocking because the couple don't owe anything. The debts have been run up by another Paul Smith. Equifax have handed the wrong man's details to the debt collectors. They made the connection between me and uh, the other Paul Smith by uh, date of birth. They hadn't used any other data points and really they should have been a lot more careful, uh, especially with my name being Paul Smith, it's, it's fairly common. Equifax boast of unique techniques that reduce mistracing. Maybe they should just stick to checking the electoral roll, because if they'd bothered to do that, they'd have found that this Paul Smith has lived at the same address for 22 years, in a completely different county to the other one. The council have now confirmed that Paul and Denise owe them nothing, yet the couple are still being chased. The, the letters from uh, the debt collection agencies haven't stopped. And I have a trail on Equifax of debt collection agencies, and that may very well impact on um, if I go for uh, a loan in future. With the amount of data that they actually hold, they have a, a duty to be careful with it. The credit reference agencies have files on almost every single adult in the UK. They're also bound by the Data Protection Act, which stipulates that the information they hold must be accurate. They may be powerful, but the law applies to them as much as it does to the rest of us. Experian have since apologised to Assad Mushtaq for failing to update his credit report and say they're discussing with him how to put things right. They blame an administrative error and say such cases are exceptionally rare. Equifax apologise and say they intend to contact Brian Charles to ensure the information is now accurate and up to date. As for Paul and Denise Smith, Equifax says the debt collector should validate the information given to them and they will ensure the erroneous search records are deleted and any 